Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back, and before we jump into today's video, I wanted to thank you all for 2400 subscribers. And today I have for you a brand new episode of the Solo Experience, this time sporting five rounds of Crystalline Conflict as a Black Mage, using the footage acquired for the Advanced Guide, which I can recommend checking out for you new Black Mage players out there. Thank you all for tuning in, relax and enjoy these five fast-paced rounds of Crystalline Conflict with commentary. Let us begin. For round one, there is a pretty nice team comp on both sides. My main focus is their warrior and dragoon. The Black Mage's ability at shutting down melee rolls is almost unrivaled, and if I can bait them in close, leaving their team behind, I can then take full advantage of those distractions. While my team goes for their backline, I like to start every match the same way. I ethereal to myself, giving me 10 seconds of instant cast. In the opening battle, you almost always want to open with Deep Freeze. As you can see at the very start, this almost caused a fast death for their Red Mage. Their Dragoon sees an opening to dive me. My White Mage shuts this down with a well-timed imp. However, he does not back down, and I can see their warrior is joining the fray. In this situation, Burst is your best bet. Not for the damage, rather for the huge shield. Doing so puts me in the position where I do not need to flee in panic, instead being able to hold out, and keeping their warrior distracted with a deep freeze. Meanwhile, my team is freely running amok in their backline, and because I used Burst early, not only do I have a good amount of resource to work with, I also had another Burst off cooldown to use offensively, leaving the warrior with no chance of escape. With the warrior out of the way, I am now in the best possible position. A black mage with no one to contest me, and this is where the stagger begins to form. With my limit break online, I can now hold off safe to the side. Using the speed lane, I can flee should I need. However, their dragoon no longer attempts to pressure me. A fatal mistake for any team, as now I can be as oppressive as I like. And oppressive play is just what you are aiming for. This is one of those jumps where you want to be near the objective, rather than pushing with your team. You want to be off to the side, safe and untouchable. Take those off angles, move in to finish kills fast, then pull back to prepare for enemy advances. Giving yourself that space allows you the free reign to shut down team battles before they begin. Again, you will see a lot of deep freeze. You have the most crowd control of any class. Abuse it. As you can see, it clearly starts to annoy the enemy team. They become undecisive. There is the odd poke at me mixed with a back and forth to the objective. If they had committed to finishing me there and then, there was a good chance they could have made a recontest. I hang around just long enough to distract. Once I fall back, not only was their warrior off in his own 1v1, their red mage makes the rather odd play to approach me, leaving only their machines to hold the objective in a 1v3, resulting in a rather easy win. Round 2 is very much the same, however this time not only am I facing double melee, I am also facing another black mage. It is important I do whatever I can to keep their black mage from creating the same space I can, and right at the start I begin by applying instacast to myself. Their dragoon makes the first move, making him the main target for my first ice stack. He instantly uses guard, I now know he plays aggressively and used himself as bait. I know his next move is to dive me, you can shut this down using Paradox and Super Flare, for a full 3 ice stacks into Deep Freeze. I can then follow up with Burst, for damage and shielding. I continue dropping back, slowly poking at those continuing to push. Now this is where many can get confused. Yes, they are moving the objective, however this does not matter. The opening battle is all about the team fight. Yes, they will get objective time. In doing so giving space, we are slowly able to chip away, and as the Black Mage I can stand off to the side using my crowd controls to be oppressive. Not only are we killing them one by one for staggered spawns, which is made worse by their black mage's attempt to stall, rather than giving objective space like we did, we also obtained more objective time because we won that opening battle. With the first fight won, we now need to keep the momentum going. I use my limit break early while I am safe. Not only does this start charging my next limit break sooner, I also have 30 seconds to work with. That is more than enough time. Making the Scholar my first victim. Shutting him down before he can spread shields is huge. Their monk follows up with some poke and knocking me back. An interesting play, as a black mage I can just teleport back in. Now see how this has flipped from the first fight. Instead of taking fights to weaken and pick us off, they are instead diving the objective one by one to stall. This is just wasted effort. 
granting us easy kills, and seeing how little MP their Dragoon has left, I am more than able to give chase. You can see their team has no desire to group or aid one another. They have all tunnel visioned on that objective, and with my summoner noticing the same opportunity, we made quick work of their Dragoon. Straight after, I can now finally engage with their Black Mage, who attempted to flank my team on the objective. This is now on me to pressure him out, and because I used my first limit break early, my second one is now ready. Again using their objective tunnel vision, I can safely give chase once again, and with my samurai backing me up, and with my samurai backing me up, there is no way he can survive, leaving me with a nice and easy cleanup on their monk once I return to the objective. This now leaves the enemy team very little time to make a comeback play. I shall let this portion unfold. Watch as I continue to abuse my crowd control, use distance to my advantage, playing the off angles, and shutting down those attempting to flank, and overall being a general nuisance. Round 3 was actually my first experience with this map. We had a DC right at the start. However, looking at their team comp, I rather like my odds. Gunbreakers suffer a lot from the Black Mage spam. Double healers is strong, but does overall hinder their maximum DPS output. So if I can be a nuisance to those three when able, and keep tabs of their Black Mage, my team should not have too much issues for winning this round. This round was a learn the map as I go, and I start with my typical ethereal manipulation to myself. Having the instant cast means burst is ready to counter dive, and I can also cast blizzard, without making myself a stationary target. I do expect to lose the first battle, being a 4v5, so I am aiming to essentially stall out. The gunbreaker isolates himself, to engage against me. My crowd control quickly forces him out, with the first fight lost. I fall back while doing what I can to aid the team, and with our DC'd player's return, I manage to land a cheeky kill on their sage. This is a risk reward play I am going for now. I go full aggressive with my limit break. They are one down, and my team are respawning, so I was aiming to chip away as much as possible. Even should I die, my spawn is much closer, and with their bard dying soon after, I made sure to stall their efforts as long as possible. I dive to die on point, in order to slow their progress. Any second counts.
fresh out of respawn, I want to engage the same way as the opening battle. Instacast Blizzard, into Paradox and Super Flare. I also threw out Half Asleep, in order to force out Purifies. Then by hard focusing their Astro, we evened things out. I then turned my full attention to their Black Mage, who did know what he was doing. However, his reaction times were severely lacking. I now know I will have no issue in limiting his gameplay. My Sage goes in, and I back him up to help secure the kill. I did notice a little late that the objective was still on the move. I used my Limit Breaking Guard, while inching closer, waiting for my moment. The first chance I get, I dive in popping everything. Freeze, sleep and burst. At the same time, my team holding close made short work of those remaining. A messy but well fought defense. Now it is our turn to take the offensive. I move up while still holding back, as I did not want my lack of map knowledge to get me killed. I am also keeping a keen eye on their limit breaks. As we pushed in, I noticed my Sage taking the left flank. With his limit break, I am confident he can survive. What I need to do now is go full oppressive. I move up to bombard their back row, which could not have gone any better. I begin by taking full advantage of their Black Mage's slower reaction times, using Burst to finish the kill, as I notice their Machinist setting up a potential one-shot combo on me with his Wildfire. However, with the mix of powerful Burst damage, and using the map to my advantage to peek and hide, I was able to burn through their MP. At this point, they fall apart. All of their resources were low, and they begin to panic, in a sequence that highlights just how oppressive the Black Mage truly is. On to round 4, I already know I am in for a good time. Having recently done the CC guide for Dark Knight myself, I know all too well just how much that role struggles against the Black Mage. Again, I need to be forcing down their Black Mage if I get the chance. Watch out for the crowd control effects of their Bard and their Ninja, and avoid getting blasted by the Machinist. Right away, we are off to an interesting start. They did a full flank rush to try and win the opening battle within the first few seconds. It starts well as my Monk melted so I start by forcing out their Bard with my Deep Freeze. With more space now to work with, I can turn my full attention to their Dark Knight, who has overstayed in this first fight. I am not concerning myself with the objective right now. The start of the match is always about winning that opening battle. And with their Dark Knight dispatched, I move to the corner ready for a Deep Freeze combo. This corner is far easier to defend, thanks to all of the natural cover. And with some well-timed back and forth, we were slowly pushing them out. Great timing as my Limit Break was coming online and the objective positioning right now could not have been better. If they want to continue fighting on point, I can safely sit off to the side here, blasting those who move in. This position also keeps me out of view of their bard, as I do not need to be taking unnecessary damage. With a well-placed freeze, I was able to force him out of battle. Their machinist holds point. With my ninja engaged, there was not much he will be able to do in response, meaning now I can turn my full attention to their flanking Dark Knight, who realized far too late the situation he was in. He falls during his retreat, leaving only the bard behind. My monk dives in and I take that opportunity to push with. Together within seconds, we made short work of him. Now here is where things get spicy. My ninja has limit break. You must understand that as a black mage, your raw damage complements a ninja's limit break so well. You simply keep watch and start blasting his targets. He did not need to limit break just yet, as their own ninja fed early. Their machinist seeing this attempts to fall back past me. This is where I outplayed him. I already know that if I isolate myself against him, most machinists in that situation would go for their limit break kill. To counter this, I used burst for the shield. He does a 180 after I give chase, believing he just baited me in. And thanks to my bonus shielding, I took zero damage and claimed the kill. Now I can fall back to aid the team with the objective, which is only being held by their Dark Knight. Their bard seeing the opportunity to jump me, rushes from behind. I use my purify early to counter his silence. This allowed me to go right into Deep Freeze. He then makes the fatal error of joining the fight on point, rather than retreating back through the speed lane, making himself the first kill for my ninja's limit break. Knowing now that he has a reset, I focus all of my damage on the next closest target, the enemy team's ninja, and it just keeps getting better from there, as now their machinist refuses to regroup, thinking that stalling the objective at all costs was the play. My powerful damage even through guards still pushed him under that 50% threshold. 
allowing my ninja to claim three easy kills with a big smile on his face. And just after, I can see their black mage off to the right. I was about to take the 1v1, just as their dark knight dives me. I pre-pop my guard, as I knew he would not hesitate to use his salted earth. A dark knight with no salted earth against a black mage is an easy kill. I use my deep freeze and pop my limit break while my monk finishes him off. At this stage, the enemy team have become so obsessed with the objective that they can't make a single decisive move together as a team and fell apart. I shall let the final minute of this round play out, as to not spoil the ending. For the fifth and final round, we once again arrive at Palestria. At the very start, you need to be checking for what roles give you issues. They only have a single monk for dive that's easy enough to handle. I need to make sure I do not tunnel vision on him, with another black mage and a bard around. Their crown control with a monk present would just destroy me. At the very start, I begin with my usual opening trick, ethereal manipulation to myself. The cooldown starts and I can now be mobile and defend with burst. Never make the first move, wait for the enemy or someone from your team. In this case, the entire enemy team went to push the objective together, so I go straight for their machinist. With a fast deep freeze, he dropped almost instantly. The burst was to ensure the kill. At the same time, my ninja was taken out, and their monk gives chase. I am okay with this, as he just used his enlightenment to knock me back. This means that even if he has the phantom rush ready, he cannot do his full big burst combo. So this 1v1 is in my favor, and drags their one and only mini roll away from the team fight. He realizes far too late the situation he is in facing two players with no MP left. As he retreats, I switch into the fire rotation. The reason I would choose fire here is because I know he'll be using guard. Guard does not block stacks. With him retreating, there is a chance he can escape. However, if I apply burn damage over time on a player with no MP, using paradox and super flare the moment his guard ends, there is a good chance that the tick damage could finish him off before he can use elixir. This was not required in the end, allowing me to switch my attention to their bard who really should not have been moving the objective with how their kit works. While forcing him out, their machinist takes the chance to attack me. Against my limit break, with no drill and no wildfire, he was of no threat, which is why I do not retreat. From there, I can freely alternate from target to target. I intend to keep them in this staggered state of trickling in one by one, which results in free kills or they end up being forced out. While trying to pressure their astrologian, their black mage flanks with the ice rotation just as I was struck with Macrocosmos. That was my cue to leave. I fall back to the speed lane to heal up. My team were more than able to take over, until my return. Once I rejoin the fight, I focus my attention on those in the backline. My allies have those closest under control, so I need to able them further, by shutting down their ranged players sitting back. In doing so, we confused the enemy team. They got lost of how to take this team fight, unable to group up and focus a single target, while we were more than capable of picking them off one by one and as the objective moves forward. There is no reason for me to be there. Keep distance and shut down flankers, until this final corner, in which I can happily sit on the speed lane in case the tension turns my way. They do put up a good defense. However, our momentum and coordination denied a recontest, resulting in a hard-fought yet still easy win. I hope these games provide some insight into the Black Mage playstyle. Good luck with your matches, thanks for tuning in, and I shall see you all in the next one.